Hey everyone, today I want to talk about gardening in my vault. In particular, I want to talk about how I'm using Excolibrain in that process. Over the last couple of weeks and months, I've become more deliberate about the ontology of links that I create in my notes, and this is starting to shape how I'm using Obsidian. If the word ontology is not familiar to you, I was exactly in the same place a couple of months ago. I heard it being used in this sort of context, but I never took the effort to understand what it means. An ontology is a set of concepts and categories in a subject area that shows their properties and the relations between them. So for example, in case of today's video, I'm going to be using my book page for building a second brain as an example. And so in this case, you can see that I add this data view field called example, and that is going to be the ontology of this link right here. The benefit of doing this is when I open Excolibrain, then you can see the relations between this document, the storyboard for gardening in my vault, and all the other documents around it. Here you can see building a second brain is an example. You can also see that, for example, there are other tools I could use for gardening in my vault. Today I'm demonstrating the use of Obsidian Excolibrain, but in fact I could be using Notepad++, which sometimes I do use, other times I'm using Tag Wrangler and some other tools as well. So I want to talk about three things. First of all, I want to highlight this point right here that over the last couple of weeks, as I was doing this process, I realized that it's best to separate the two activities of defining the relationships by adding a field and deciding how it should be visualized in Excolibrain. The beauty of using an ontology is at any time I can change the definition of how I want to visualize it. Let me show you, for example, in this case. So you can see right now, building a second brain is in a friend relationship with gardening in my world. If I want to move building a second brain to become a child or to be more exact, if I want to move all the examples to be a child of the node instead of a friend of the node, I can open settings. And in settings, I can navigate to Excolibrain. And here I can look for the example field right there. I can copy this field or actually cut this field and paste it here as a child. When I've done this, then going back to my graph, you will see that building a second brain has become a child of gardening in my vault. Also, what I want to show you, first I want to clean this up because in effect, example and examples should be friends or at least that is the way I'm thinking about it today. But I want to show you one more thing here. A recent enhancement in Excolibrain includes this list of unassigned fields from my vault. So you can see I'm using all of these fields somewhere in my vault, but I haven't yet defined if they're parents, children, or friends. I also have this category called excluded, and excluded is there because some of these I never want to use in my ontology because they are there for a different purpose. So for example, let's look at Twitter. It's always the username address of the person on Twitter. This is never going to be a link. And similarly, email is never going to be a link within my vault. So I don't want to clutter these lists right here. I'll show you why in a second. And I also don't want to see this in the unassigned list. So all I need to do is I need to paste email and Twitter here. And as I write them in here, you can see that this has disappeared. Now also, for example, I have the architect right here. The architect is typically 
a member of a project, but I like to see the members and the related people on the left hand side as a friend. So I'm going to add architect right here and I'm also going to add the CFO of a company to the left side and so on. You can see the logic of how you can clean up your unassigned links and you can add them to the various categories of being parents, children or friends. And the end result is you get a consistent graph view for your vault based on the description of your links, based on the ontology of your links. And you can start to learn where each of these items should appear visually. And when you're looking for a person, for example, related to a project, you will know that that person is going to be on the left in case of this ontology. So getting back to our story, just to recap. So the first point I wanted to get across is to segregate these two activities in your mind by focusing on adding the right ontology for my links. I was able to detach this activity from deciding there to visualize it in my brain. And I like this separation of two activities. I can think better in these separate terms. Now, I also added some new Excolibrain features. First of all, I have this new feature to list all data view fields in the vault. So I have a suggester and you can see all the suggester settings right here. And let me just show you. So the ontology suggester has some trigger combinations. If I only want to see the parent fields, then I can use this trigger. If I want just the children, I can use this trigger, etc. And this trigger up here is the trigger to show all of the fields that are either a parent, a child or a friend. So then I get all the valid fields that I want to use in my ontology as well as data view has this feature of mid sentence fields and the way you can create it that you can use one of these two brackets and depending on which one it has a slightly different look and feel i like this bracket right here you can add a data view field in the middle of a sentence so let me show you how all of this looks like when we come to our example if i click here and open my book page for Tiago's book, then you can see that here I'm using some of these capabilities. So in this interview with Scott Young, Tiago talks about this idea of writing is thinking and the second brain is not only about remembering stuff, but it's actually the act of writing stuff down that those thoughts are clarified in your head. And this reminded me of all my other quotes on writing. And here again, if I open Excolibrain, you will see that I have my quotes on writing here. And if I click here, then I already see I have three quotes here. One is writing is thinking. And this is by Jordan Peterson, where he actually says the very same thing that writing and thinking are one and the same. The other quote here is by Sönke Ahrens, and this is about the articulation of our thoughts and the precision that this brings into our thinking. And finally, this is a quote from Educated, and I can see that I didn't add Educated here. So let's just click this link and let's come here and I'm going to add. So I'm going to use this triple column and I'm going to type source, press enter, and I'm going to write educated the book. And with that, I have already added the book that it comes from as there you go, the book that this quote comes from on this graph. Now, moving back to quote some writing and moving back to building a second brain. Let's continue on how I'm using the ontology on this page. So later I write Thiago's thinking and the content of the book was heavily inspired by, and then you can see Zettelkasten and getting things done. 
And by the way, not so surprising that we saw under quotes a quote by Zenke Arendt, which talked about this very same idea of writing brings precision to our thinking. And then finally here, this is another podcast with Tiago. Here he talked about his fascination with lean manufacturing and the link to personal knowledge management. And here I have this mid-sentence field or link related to lean. And with that, again, you can see here that I will see lean right here. And if I want to explore this, then of course I can click in Excalibrain and I can see all the different lean tools and concepts I have. So getting back to our storyboard, the final bit I wanted to highlight is I tried to do a retrospective cleanup of my notes. And what I found was it is super hard slash impossible to create a meaningful ontology retrospectively. Yes, in some cases I can force the process, but it takes significant brain work and time. And also I don't think it's worth it. On the other hand, this also shows that by adding the ontology as I create the notes, when it's crystal clear in my head, I know why I'm creating that link. And there are not so many questions why I would want to do it or what I should write as a connecting word or phrase. This means that I am adding additional value and context to my page simply because doing it later on is very hard. So going forward, I put extra effort into creating these ontologies and I already see the value of it through my Excolibrain graphs and the links or connections that this uncovers in my brain. But retrospectively, no, I'm not going to do it. So there were some final small bits and pieces I wanted to show you before closing today's video. And let me just go back to our example page where I can show you these things. So one thing I wanted to show you is if you come across a new relationship, maybe this is this contradicts and you can say something. So what you would expect is contradicts now appears here in the unassigned list. And there you go. So there's contradicts right there. But there's a better way as well. So when I'm creating contradicts and I have an idea if I would want this to be a parent, a friend or a child, I can also bring up the common palette. And let's say I want to make this a friend. Then I can here click add data view field to ontology as friend. And if I do this, then you can see added contradicts as a friend. I can already show you here that this book contradicts something. And if I open settings, of course, not a big surprise. You will see contradicts right here in the list. The other bit I wanted to show you is I added this switch down here that you can add the selected field from the suggester in bold or you can add it in normal. Right now it's turned on to be bold. Bold means that these field names when I add them so you can see that this contradicts now is not bold. But if I would now bring up my suggester and hit enter because I have that setting. The field name is added in bold and this just makes it maybe visually more easy to read the text because you will see the data view fields with bold, those data view fields that you created with the setting turned on. Getting back to our summary page. Today I talked about gardening in my vault using Excolibrain. And I explained what an ontology is. We looked at an example, my book page for building a second brain. We talked about the value of separating the two activities, adding the ontology and then 
thinking about how you should visualize it later. I showed you some of the new features in Excolibrain. And finally, I mentioned this process of retrospective cleanup being super hard. I'm not doing it. On the other hand, for me, there's a message in it being super hard, which is if I do it upfront, I am adding real new value to my vault. So that's all I wanted to share with you today. Until next time. Thank you.